Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining me on replay. Uh, I'm gonna wait for some people to sign on live and we'll get started. I'm gonna do a uh, announcement and maybe a short devotion this morning for Church in the Woods. We have a special announcement. Um, for those that are watching on replay, we'll go ahead and let you know we're uh, moving to Saturday nights. But um, it's just something we feel that the Lord is wanting us to do. And uh, I'll give a little bit more explanation for that in just a moment. But appreciate you guys joining. And uh, we'll get started in just a moment. Good morning. Let me know where you're watching from. Love to see the different places we're reaching. And we appreciate you guys joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Happy 4th of July weekend to everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. And um, we are uh, we're excited. We're very excited about what God is doing. Um, he gave us direction on what to do with the ministry, which direction to go with the ministry. And so that's what we're focused on. We're laser focused on what God wants us to do. And um, when it comes down to it, we're about winning souls. That's what we're about. We're about reaching the lost. And we've always been, that's always been our calling. And uh, sometimes we get on other things. It seems like, you know, you can kind of start getting spreading out a little bit. But really and truly, if you want to be very, um, have the most success spiritually, you need to be right in the center of God's will. And it's hard to stay in the center of God's will a lot of times because we have our own desires. We have our own ideas. A lot of times we try to figure out where we're headed with the Lord. And so we'll start, you know, making our plans. But see, God's liable to make a complete right turn somewhere and just throw us off. That's why we need to be patient and we need to follow his lead. And, um, He's, he is faithful. He is faithful. Even when we get off track, he's faithful to bring us back, to put us back where we need to be. So on this Sunday morning, I just want to say good morning. Thank you for joining me. Getting ready. I'm going to be on here just really briefly. But I want to say this. Uh, we're moving Church in the Woods to uh, Saturday nights. And I don't even really know that it should be called Church in the Woods, to be honest with you. Let me, let me explain to you about Church in the Woods real quick. We had people getting saved through Real Word Outdoors, that's our ministry. And through Real Word, when people were getting saved, we felt that they weren't being discipled because a lot of you guys are everywhere. You live all over the country. And so we started the Church in the Woods as a place where people could come and be discipled. And the, the, the theory was we'd have people teaching uh, and putting teaching content on Church in the Woods and that would help people grow. And it started out, there was a couple of guys and some, some that were doing that, but it, you know, people get busy and and things change so it never really uh, took off as doing what we intended it for it to do which was to, to disciple people and that's a great um, that's a great thing and it's what we're you know the Bible teaches to make disciples but I'm an evangelist and so I think where I might have got off on the wrong track is trying to do more than what I'm called to do now I, I believe in discipleship we need discipleship you're going to be discipled by brothers and sisters in Christ and in the church. An evangelist's job is very specific, is to go out and share the good news of Jesus Christ, to reach the law. The gift of an evangel of an evangelist is really not appreciated to a lot of churches today. Um, and the reason for that is, I, there's a lot of reasons, we won't go into all that, but an evangelist is someone that is to help the church, to grow the church, to reach out to the highways and hedges. And that's what we're called to do. And the Lord has really been dealing with us. You know, Sunday mornings, we see a lot of people are making decisions for Christ. We've, we've hit over a thousand decisions for Christ. And to God be the glory, we praise him for all, every, every just one. But he's really been stirring my spirit to do this on Saturday nights. And uh, to be really specific, try to reach lost souls with the simple message of Jesus Christ, the gospel. He loves you. He gave himself for you. He rose again the third day, and he's coming back. For you and I. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to move uh, Church in the Woods, which really is not Church in the Woods. It's going to be Saturday night, uh, Saturday night live in the woods. We may call it Crusade in the Woods. I don't know what we'll call it. really doesn't matter. What matters is you need to understand we are trying to reach lost souls. Bottom line. That's what we're after. If you're a Christian and you've been following our page, we appreciate you. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your support and your faithfulness. But what I'm asking you to do and what you really should be doing is reaching out.
out to your lost loved ones and your family to watch these videos, to join us on Saturday night. If nothing else, you say, well, they're out partying on Saturday night, so they probably won't, hey, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But you could share that video with them on Saturday night and Sunday morning when they wake up, they can click on it and boom, there's a gospel message speaking specifically to them because that's what God has called us to, to those people that are out there in the world and we're trying to reach them. That's what the church should be doing. That's what we should be focused on, worshiping the Lord, being discipled, and going out and reaching the lost. And so we want to do our part in reaching the lost. So we're moving it to Saturday night. Share that. Let everyone know. We won't, we won't be back on here on Sunday mornings unless God tells me to. I, I never say never because the Lord can, you know, I, I don't know what he's got planned down, down the road. But as of now, we're moving to Saturday night because we feel that's the best place for us to evangelize and reach it reach the people we're supposed to be reaching. We, more importantly, I feel this God, God is leading me to move to Saturday nights. So now, Nathan Shelton has joined us. He's got a church he goes to on Sunday morning. Uh, we, we kicked around the idea of could we do it early in, the, in Sunday mornings and him come and we do it together that way. He plays the piano and sings. It just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel like that was God's will. God wants him and his family in church. God wants my family and myself in, in church. And look, I know there's a lot of people that watch these videos and you don't go to church. And, and to be quite honest with you, my family and I have not been attending church for some time now. We, we, when we're done with the devotion or the preaching in the woods, I go and preach to my family. I go set at the hearth in my, on my fireplace and we do a devotion and we love it. We have a wonderful time. And, uh, I don't, I, that's my church. I feel like there's two or three are gathered, you know, for all the people that like to throw the different scriptures around, you know, you need to be in a building. No, you don't need to be in a building. You need to be in an assembly. You need to assemble together with like-minded believers. However, there are some things that you can benefit from being with more, with a large group of people. I say a large group of body of believers um, outside of maybe your family. And I know with COVID, people can't run out of the churches and they started watching online and, uh, you know, that could, that could possibly happen again in the future. I don't know, but it's really sad for me when I saw so many people afraid to go and assemble together, but yeah, you see them in Lowe's or you see them in public places because what we did is we gave into the, the fear mongering that was being perpetuated and the church was under attack. So maybe that's what God is stirring me to, to talk about some too, but anyway, I want to read something, something to you out of Ephesians chapter 4, and then we'll, we'll get off here because I know you guys, uh, you may have a church to go to, or uh, I know we got to take off and go. Let, Ephesians 4 chapter 11, I want to read this to you. It says, and he, God, he gave, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and to a measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and are compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Wow, what does that mean? Bottom line, he give gifts to the church. An evangelist is a gift, the pastor, apostles, teachers. That's gifts to the church. When we, if you come to the, church, paint church here, if you come to my house on Sunday morning and you do a devotion with us, you're going to hear an evangelistic type message. That's what my children have been getting. That's what my wife is getting every Sunday. That's what you guys get. And we're always trying to reach lost soul. But see, that's, and that's a wonderful gift, but they're missing out on other gifts. The gift of a pastor, the gift of a teacher. And so when we go into a body of Christ, what was really, what God's intention was is all the people, all the gifts come together in the body of Christ. And then we have people pouring into us 
and we pour into them. When I said the gift of an evangelist is not appreciated in a lot of churches today, I meant that. Not in a way that, hey, I need you to let me preach in your church. No, I, I love preaching in the woods. I'm just being honest. The gift of an evangelist is to the church. It's to, it's to build the church. It's to, it's to reach the lost. It's to encourage other people in the church how to go and share their faith. But so is the gift of a teacher, is a pre, is a, I think, misused a lot of times in the church. Teachers, is, it's a, if you're a called teacher of God, you have an anointing on you. When you go and teach, people will receive it. And you, can, you can feel the anointing. You can tell that God is using you. And people will be dialed in, watching and taking everything and maybe even taking notes. That's so important because that pastor is preparing all week. He's praying. He's trying to seek God's face. Hopefully that's what he's doing. But when he gets in the pulpit and preaches, it doesn't need to be just he's, that's the only meal you've had that day. You need to come in and get some good teaching. You need to hear the word of God being taught from an anointed teacher. And then when you go into the sanctuary for the preaching of the word of God, you're prepared, your heart's prepared. You go in there seeking and to worship God and in spirit and in truth. And then God blesses and pours out his spirit on the whole church. And that is really what the Lord intended this to be. But you cannot have that apart from the body of Christ because there's giftings that you're missing out on, your family's missing out on. I know some people may not agree with this, and there was a time when I was good with how we were, not attending a church anywhere. Because I grew up attending a church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, and I was lost on the church row and lost. And I know a lot of other people are like that. But the bottom line is this, when you assemble together with like-minded believers, and they're truly there for the right reasons, and they're truly children of God, there's gifts there that God has put in people that you guys can sharpen each other and pour into each other. And I don't want my children missing out on that. I don't want to miss out on that. And I have a great friend and brother in Christ, David Rogers in Georgia. Me and him have been friends a long time. Andrew Kanzler is a good friend to him. Them two are, are tight. They're buddies. But when I, I met David years ago on Facebook and then I ended up actually stayed at his home when I preached in uh, near Macon, Georgia, uh, a couple of a few years ago and I caught we were talking yesterday we ain't talked in a long time I said give me one good reason David one good reason why I should not have church in the woods on in the morning and he was not telling me not to do it I, I said I want to ask you a question give me one good reason why I should go to a church just one because every time you ask anyone it's always like well you know Forsake not yourselves to assemble together. Yeah, I know that. that. That's what we do. We, My family, we assemble together. And all this other stuff. No, I want a good biblical reason. You know what he told me? He hit me right between the eyes. It was good. He said, I got, I got something. He says, if you die today, what does your family do next Sunday? What does your family do after they're through mourning, however long that takes? Where do, what do they do? Where do they go? How do they get fed? What happened? That got my attention because I got to thinking it's a lot like not even having life insurance. If I die and have no life insurance, my family's in bad shape. But if I have good life insurance, then they're taken care of. And spiritually speaking, we always worry about the financial. We worry about the material, the worldly. What about the spiritual? My family needs to be taken care of spiritually, which means they need people around them that love them and will pour into them the giftings that God has given them. And so if I added a picture automatically it takes everything away because my family has been sitting under me for every Sunday and hearing from me every Sunday for the Lord as I, he uses me. But when I'm gone, what happens? It really got my wheels spinning. And then I started looking in the scripture and he shared some scriptures with me and, and talking about the gifts of the church. I'm hard sometimes on the church when I preach and a lot of pastors don't like me. As a matter of fact, I've probably alienated a lot of preachers. I really have. And, and it hurts my feelings because I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy that everybody goes, oh, God, I don't want him in the pulpit. You know, no telling what he might say. Well, you, you know what? You're right. There's no telling what I might not what I might say because I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to get up there and, and dance on a line. I'm going to speak the truth. And I had a man tell me, and I, it was probably good advice. He says, always tell the truth. But you don't have to, how did he say it? But you don't have to tell everything. I, I don't remember how he said it. In other words, some, some things don't need to be said, but here it, here, here it is for me. God told me in my spirit when I started preaching, 
if you be honest, I can use you. Honesty means being transparent and speaking completely transparent and, and, and being obedient to God. And so that's what we try to do, or that's what I do. And through that, there's been some pastors that have gotten mad. There's been some that's even called me or messaged me to complain or, or to be uh, debate. I'm not here to debate you. I'm firm on what I believe. I know the scriptures. I've searched out the things that I have questions about. Uh, I was raised to believe some things that I, after I searched the scriptures, I found it was not accurate. And, and, and I'm sure a lot of us can say the same thing. Nothing against the church I grew up. I grew up in a wonderful church with a wonderful pastor, wonderful. But the truth of the matter is denomination divides. And denomination is not in the Bible. It is not in, it's not in there. And so the reason people are divided is there are certain things they believe and certain things they don't believe. And they're not comfortable to be open-minded and let the Lord word speak for itself. They want to try to take it and make God fit in this little perfect little box because it don't make sense to them. A lot of things just don't make sense. But the truth is, God says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. You're never going to figure him out. You're never going to understand him fully. The way we know God, the mind of God, the only way we can know the mind of God is searching the scriptures. This is God's word. And searching the scriptures and the Holy Spirit revealing to us this word. The power of God is real today. God didn't quit giving gifts. He didn't stop putting his power into people to use them. You cannot do anything for God without the Holy Ghost. You cannot. You have no power if you don't have the Spirit of God in you. You're powerless. And so many Christians, they are powerless because they don't, they were born again. And look, if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit living within you. Bottom line, you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit. He does the, he does the work. He's the one that does the regeneration process. He is God that comes to dwell in a new believer when they're born again. When you repent, believe on Jesus Christ, and receive him as your personal Savior, and, say, and decide by your heart, I'm following Christ, that born-again experience, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. There's a lot of people that they don't stir that gift up inside of them. They dry up. There's no power. And they go to church, and they do religious things, but there's no power in your life. It was never intended to be that way. Never. God wants power on his people, his power, and the giftings that I read to you. When the church comes together with the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, it's a powerful service, it's a powerful experience. That's what they were having as they went from house to house breaking bread. By the way, I actually prayed a long time about should we just do that? Should we just get people to say, hey, let's just go house to house and break bread, so to speak, but let's go house to house and have services together with each other. And the bottom line is this. When we assemble ourselves together in earnest to worship the one true God, looking to hear from the man of God and teachers and to receive the, the others pouring into us as we pour into them with, with the giftings we have, there's a unity that we don't have today, but that's what, that unity, when they were in one accord, that's when God really can move in a place. And unity is not something that's easily obtained because it is simple, it's there, it can happen just like that. But the reason it's so hard to obtain is one word, pride. That's it, pride. Spiritual pride, religious pride, whatever kind of pride. Pride is why we just can't get along. Pride is why we bicker and fight. Pride is why we just seem to be kind of sporadically firing here and firing there, but we're not just all firing on, on all cylinders, as they say at the church, because we have pride. If we will humble ourselves and seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, the Lord says he will heal our land because we're his people. But we have problems humbling ourselves. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. For me to walk in another church and sit down on the pew is going to take me humbling myself. You say, what, well, what kind of statement is that? Because the very first thing I do, and I can't help it, is I start looking and I say, okay, that, don't, that ain't right. Man, that ain't right. I'm just being honest. That ain't right. 
There's no perfect church. And so for me, it was easier for me just to say, okay, we're just going to go to the woods and just have church. That's where we need to be. Um, when our church split, it was a hurtful thing. My church I grew up in, it hurt me tremendously. And what it did is it put a, a wedge or something in me that made me bitter. And I had to deal with that. I had to deal with that before I could move on with God. And maybe somebody out there today, maybe you're in the same situation. Maybe you're bitter because of something that's happened in church and been hurt. You need to understand something. People are messy. People have problems. You and I have problems. There's none of us perfect. That's why Jesus said we're to love each other as we, as we love ourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself. The first thing is love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul. If we can do that, if we can love God with everything we got, and we can love our neighbors ourselves. How do you love your neighbors yourself? Look at them as a soul. Don't look at that person because they're a liar or because that person has stabbed you in the back or that person said something they shouldn't have said. Don't look at that because if you look at that, you know what you're doing? You're, you're, you're living in a glass house and you're throwing rocks at somebody. None of us are perfect. I say, God, show me my faults before I see others. That's a prayer that we need to pray. I pray that God will do it. He'll start showing you things. But look at that person as a soul that God loves. Yeah, they got problems. Yeah, they're, they, they're, they need, some of them may even need to be born again. But the only way they're going to see Christ is in us. When they see the love of God in us, they see us humbling ourselves and showing Jesus Christ to them. If I had my way, y'all, I'm going to say, I'm going to get off of here, but if I had my way, I'll go ahead and throw this out there. I would rather preach the gospel. I'd rather go to a, and I've never been to a concert, by the way, but I'd rather go to a Florida Georgia Line concert or a Morgan Walling concert and get up after they're done singing with all the people out there drunk and preach the gospel straight up right then. I would rather preach to that crowd than put up this tin or put up this big thing and have a bunch of church folk come and gather and say, woo we got revival. The people that I want to reach are the ones that would be at the concert, are the ones that are out there. And look, if, I'm not judging them. I'm just telling you that's where we need to be, folks. Jesus wouldn't be sitting up in a building and saying, okay, y'all come worship me, I'm here. No, he'd be flipping tables over and whipping people out because they've made his house a, a, den of, a house of merchandise and a den of thieves. And then he would go out in the streets where the prostitutes and the drunks are, and that's the ones he'd be around, trying to reach them and show them there's hope. We're to be like Jesus. We're to do what he does. And the only way we can do that is to humble ourselves and follow it the Holy Spirit lead us. If there's any way, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if there's any way I ever get to go and preach at a, uh, to an audience, as I mentioned, a Morgan Wallen concert, or even a no-name person where everybody's out there partying, I'm going. That's where I'll be. Matter of fact, if I had the funding and the way to do it, I'd probably, that's, that's the kind of crusades we would do. Church folks would be, oh my God, I would never attend that. How dare you? Well, you keep on playing your Caleb and you keep on playing your Southern gospel hoping that a lost person is going to show up to hear that to your ice cream social so you can tell them about Jesus. It ain't going to happen. Because when I was lost, the last place I wanted to be was hearing some Christian music, hanging around some Christian people. What I wanted to do was partay. I wanted to have a big time. And I wanted Jesus when it was convenient. I wanted Jesus when it fit the narrative. But for the most part, I wanted Jesus to stay over there where he's supposed to stay until I need him and let me just raise hell. Those are the people that I want to reach because I know them, I know where they're at, I know how they feel, I know what they're thinking. And you know how I can reach them? Because I have the power of the Holy Spirit in me and I'll share the gospel. It's not some kind of blueprint I figured out. It's not some kind of spiritual cliche. It's the gospel, the power of God unto salvation. is real and under the anointing, will break through barriers and break walls. Lord have mercy. That's where my heart's at. Now that you know, that's where I'm at. That's where I've been. Some of you may already know that. Today is the last Sunday morning, unless God tells me different, that we'll be doing this.
Now, I'm not saying we won't come on on Sunday morning sometime to do it, maybe, but we're going to be on Saturday nights. That's where we're going to be. You share that. It's not a service. It's not a church service. It's a rescue mission. That's what we're doing. You share it with your friends, your lost loved ones, your neighbors, your family. You share that. That's the way you can share the gospel. And it's not offensive for you because we're going to preach to them. We're going to talk to them. We're going to tell them about Christ. Saturday nights at 9 o'clock is what we're moving to. God bless you today. Um, we'll try to keep doing some morning devotions. I know I've been slack on that for the last two weeks. It's just be hate, hectic time, busy. But uh, we, we'll be coming on. We can come on. Love you guys. Love every one of you. Appreciate the support. We've hit over 140,000 followers. To God be the glory. Uh, I had posted uh, that. Facebook sent me something that you can post to thank everybody. A little picture. But you know what? I deleted it this morning. Yeah. Because I felt bad. I was like, you know what? That's just bragging. I mean, what? yeah, you're bragging on God. I don't have to do that. I just give him the praise and glory. That's all we need to do. Give him the praise and the glory and move on. There's 140,000 people that are souls. Souls. If we're obedient, God will give the increase, but we've got to be obedient. So I give him all the praise and the glory for everything he's done. Don't miss out on assembling together with believers. You say, well, I just don't think I got to go to church. You are the church, fella. Brother, sister, you are the church. And when we come together, and if you're born again, when we come together, Johnny over here has got the gift of teaching. Sarah over here has got the gift of prophecy. Uh, George over here has got the gift of knowledge. Whatever. All the spiritual gifts are there. Well, I just don't believe the gifts are, are there anymore. Well, you need, to, you need to just wake up. The gifts of the Spirit, God has not changed. He's not quit giving gifts. That is what makes the church grow. That's how we, that's how we prosper and flourish spiritually. When you're in a position, a place where all the gifts are manifest, in order, the way God wanted intended them to be. It's power. That's the New Testament church. That's what was intended to be. So you are neglecting or missing out on the mo the best of what God has to give you when you neglect assembling together with a body of believers. It's just a fact. Because you don't have all the gifts, my friend. You can't minister to yourself with all them gifts. You have to be with other people. That, and, and here's another thing, men. Let me speak to men. I'm trying to get off of here. You're the spiritual leader of your home. You. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't say the woman's the spiritual leader. The man is the spiritual leader of the home. Now, I'm not saying there's some women that have to be because their man's too sorry to do it. Bam. That's the truth. He won't do it. He lays around drinking beer all day or whatever. Don't worry. I don't know. But we'll pray that they get saved. Pray that God stirs his heart up and gets him off his butt and helps him be the spiritual leader of his home because his children need to see a man, a leader, somebody that's dedicated to God. That gives them discipline. That gives them assurance and makes it makes the home complete. That's the way God wants it. The spiritual leader of the home is supposed to be the man. But guess what, man? You're supposed to love your wife as the, uh, Jesus loved the church. That's incredible love. We can't really fathom the depths of that love which means you should care enough for your wife and your family that they're in a place where they're getting fed and they're getting ministered to in the Word of God and by the people of God because you might not be here tomorrow and what's going to happen to your family. That hit me like a, like a brick when it was told to me. Be real. Be you. Don't be fake. Be honest. Be humble and, and know without a shadow of a doubt this God that we serve and this God that we claim to know is alive and is all-powerful. And he wants to show himself strong to his, believe, to his children and to those that are unbelievers. He wants to show himself. But he has a way he does that. And the first thing we have to do is humble ourselves and be faithful to him, not to what we want, but to what he is saying and wanting us to do. And God will show this world something. This world's in bad shape. This world needs Christ. 
How are they going to receive him? How are they going to get Jesus if we don't take it to him? How are they ever going to see the truth of his word if we don't go after him? Think about that. God bless you. Be blessed today. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.